What's going on, everyone? This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. Hey guys, I can't believe that we are almost to episode 100. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. Uh, just seems like we just barely passed 80,000 downloads and we're almost at 85 already, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Anyway, thanks to all you guys who are listeners out there. Hopefully the um, the holidays went well. Um, I know that's the political way to say it, but whatever. I'm Christian, so I'll just say it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and uh, happy to have all of you guys here on the show. I uh, really appreciate uh, every one of you. And hopefully, hopefully, whatever's going on right now for you, uh, you're enjoying it. Uh, it is um, the day after Christmas here. And I'm not going to lie, after three days, after three days of vacation, you know, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, like I am. Technically, I have today off, but I have spent, uh, what is it? It's uh, five o'clock. I have spent almost 10 hours building funnels today. Uh, yes, for fun. Okay, <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, I had a hard time uh, even yesterday at the end of the day. I was like, okay, gosh, like I got to get back to work. You know what I mean? Anyway, I don't know if that's a problem or an issue or whatever, but uh, anyway, there's snow all over the place, which is very fun. We had snow uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. It's, it's snow all over the place, and uh, it always reminds me. So I grew up in Littleton, Colorado, Denver, um, Denver area, kind of a suburb of Denver, right up against the mountains, and um, the elevation's pretty high there. There's a lot of really high mountains and snows like crazy. There was one year that there was a, a five foot snowstorm. Um, I always laugh here in Boise, Idaho, where we live now when people are like, Oh, it, it was, uh, last year they call it snowmageddon. Oh, there's so much snow. It's snowmageddon. Oh my gosh. And there was like maybe six inches on the ground. Like it wasn't that much snow. And, uh, I was kind of laughing about how big of a deal ever made it. Um, but, uh, um, there's actually a good amount on the snow, on the ground here. Uh, anyway, so growing up though, we would, there was this, there was this, uh, golf course that we grew up on and we grew up on the back nine on fairway 16 It's a public golf course, not like super, you know, fancy schmancy or anything like that. And, um, it was kind of fun though, because every time it snowed super, super hard or even just a, like a foot or two, which is pretty frequent in the winter, um, we would we would jump the fence. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm confessing right here on the on the podcast. We would jump the fence though, and we would we would go out onto the fairway of the golf course. Obviously, there's no golfers out or anything, so it was this massive this massive snow playground, and we would build these huge snow forts, and uh, uh, we'd build two of them, and uh, the other one would would be you know. I don't know, 20 paces away from the other one. And then what we do is we would go grab bottle rockets and Roman candles and all sorts of fireworks and paraphernalia. And we would load up two different teams and we'd shoot back and forth at each other um, between the two snow forts. And uh, we had very minimal injuries <laughs> doing this, but it was a lot of fun. And every time I see snow uh, in any kind of uh, accumulation, I always remember that experience for some reason. A whole bunch of others as well, but uh, spe- uh, specifically that one. So anyway, hopefully it's been good though. Hopefully you had time to spend time with family and you remember the reason you got into this business in the first place. Um, so anyway, um, anyway, hey, so I want you to know that um, Stephen, what have you been building today? Hey, funny you should ask. Okay. <laughs> I've actually been um, building a lot of management funnels. Okay. And you're like, what? Oh my gosh, Stephen, what is this? Holy crap. Like, <laughs> uh, this is um, anytime that there's a process internally that I have to do over and over and over and over again. Um, that drives me crazy. I am, I'm not an efficiency snob, but I do love variety enough that I hate doing the same thing over and over and over again. So I will go automate it. I will go automate as much of it as I can. I'll go automate every piece, every little nook and cranny as much as possible so that there is enough variety in my own business life. Um, so it's almost a, almost a move for me of self-preservation, uh, funny enough. Some people are like, oh, you efficiency snob. Not really. Uh, it's kind of a mess where I am right now. I got, uh, I've got uh, parts of guns around me as, I, as I've been toying around, tweaking some stuff with some, some guns. I've got uh, uh, packages, uh, things I got to finish shipping. I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily like a neat freak. I'm not necessarily like a, an efficiency snob, but I do. It's the other way around. I do. I love variety so much that um, uh, I, 
if I have to do the same task over and over and over again. So whether 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 you are an efficiency snob or whether or not you're you're like me and you just crave variety constantly, uh, whatever it is, um, uh, you can you can use funnels not just for sales but for the actual automation of things. Okay. So what I've been doing and I do this a lot. I've done this a lot. Um, uh, who said I was talking to? I think it was. I think it was Miles, Miles Clifford. Shout out to you, buddy. Uh, I was asking uh, a few days ago, I was asking, hey, is Zapier like the tool that seems really to be underutilized um, that really opens up the rest of ClickFunnels? And I said, yes, absolutely. Okay, and if you've never used Zapier, um, especially when it comes to the management funnels and the management funnel topic, um, Zapier is like, it's like... (laughs) It's like the ring from Lord of the Rings, okay? Uh, It's the ring of power, okay? (laughs) That's how I look at it. Because I'm not a coder. I I have no idea how to code. But um, what I will do a lot of times is automatically, anytime anyone buys or anytime anyone becomes a lead, I'll pass that data on to Google Sheets. And whether it's a VA, and I don't want to give them access to my ClickFunnels account, or whether it's it's somebody else, you know, I'll go and I will automate those different things um, so that uh, A, no one else has access to my ClickFunnels account, but then B, everything's automated and I can say hey look anytime a contact hits this sheet go ahead and follow up with them about x y and z and do it do you know the one two and three and uh, that's exactly what I've been doing and so there's been this area I've wanted to build this for a while I've wanted to build this for quite a while and um, um, I don't <laughs> I don't like automating stuff right off the bat when there's no need you know what I mean? So I like to look where the biggest pain point is. And I started looking at all these different articles of like, hey, when to automate, when to do X, Y, and Z, stuff like that. And quite honestly, I mean, people get really intense with it, which is great. It's not exactly my huge thing, but I love management funnels. That's what I call them. These are like internal processes. A lot of people don't know that before I worked for ClickFunnels, one of the things that I was doing was I, my job was to go around and to create internal processes i would literally um uh, so that the company could run better whether it was shipping or or automating tasks to support agents or uh, you know all these all these internal processes that's that's actually what i was doing uh very heavily very strongly i was actually very good with infusionsoft plus click funnels integrations the integration back and forth between them um i was very good with and that's what i was doing and so there's a side of me that loves setting up that structure I don't like to run it. It's not my personality to run it, but I love setting it up. Um, and so I've been doing that same kind of stuff to to my own business. Um, so what I've been doing is thinking through like, okay, what are the pain points? What are the things that I've wanted to go fix and get done? And so this is something that I've wanted to do for, for quite some time. And that is to automate um, or, or far better manage the interview process that I have. Um, uh, episodes 60 and 61 of this podcast go through and talk about how I podcast, all the systems that I use, all the little things that I put together. My, you know, I've got my own systems for this now. You know, after 100 episodes, I mean, I've got a pattern, um, and it's on purpose. Um, but uh, what I and then the, uh, how should I say this? A lot of that stuff is things I'm going to do when I just do an episode on my own. But what if I want to go interview somebody else? Or what if somebody wants, wants to interview me? It is literally handled different every single time that happens, that scenario. And it's driving me crazy. Um, I have a huge list of people that I want to interview. There's a huge list of people that are trying to get me interviewed on their show or their YouTube thing or their Facebook, whatever it is. And I'm flattered by it. It's awesome. I would love to do it, of course. But... Every single individual situation is being handled differently right now. And so I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. And so what I did is I came up with, um, it's a blend between like an opt-in funnel meets application funnel meets, um, meets, uh, Zapier, and I, I found out some cool ways to not have to use things like Wufu or Typeform or anything like that. And I just use the, the generic input form straight off of ClickFunnels. And I just uh, do some cool things with them. So that's all I use now. But anyway, this is like, oh my gosh, you guys, this is way too technical of a podcast already. I can feel it. Okay. <laughs> I can feel it. We're, we're craving a story here. We need some story here wrapped in this. Otherwise, people are going to start drawing out here. Okay. And I get it. And I feel it. And you probably are too. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you realize like there's really five steps that I use to automate internal processes, okay? And and they're very simple. A lot of them are no does, like duh, like why would I not do that? But honestly, if you can do this, uh, 
Oh my gosh, it saves you so much time. It is ridiculous how much it saved me. Even in, um, so when we launched the two comic club coaching program, right? Uh, the, the, the fat event, the funnel hackathon event, right? That's an event for three days. Russell and I go on stage, um, uh, him for a while, me for a while, both of us side by side for a while. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. But there was tons of these little, um, internal processes that the click funnel support team was having to handle just off these one-offs you know someone would come in and it was like oh it's driving me nuts so i came in and and added these cool little internal processes that made support talk better with a film which t- made talk better with me which talked better, and it's all automated okay and obviously if you don't have a business yet this is not gonna matter okay <laughs> and if you do have a brand new business i wouldn't worry about this stuff either Okay, the, the time, the moment when it's best to start thinking about kind of internal management um, funnels or internal management processes, whatever you want to call them, they're not sales funnels, they're, they're, they're to, to increase efficiency, is really after you've been in business for a while, or not a while, but a, enough time to see where the pain points are. Okay, I'm a huge advocate of, of Tim Ferriss in the 4-Hour Workweek when he said that you should be the support agent for the first, he even recommends a month. Um, uh, so that you take note of all the support that comes in, all of your answers back, all, all the pieces, because now, now you know exactly what to do when you go hire somebody else. You can hand them this sheet of, of all the, all the different pieces that, uh, um, you get asked about most frequently, all the pre canned responses that you've handed out and you are literally duplicating your position. Okay. Get that that's the time when we start working for in uh figuring out internal processes and management funnels and things like that okay not not for a while though um i always kind of laugh when when someone's like well okay it's a brand new funnel and then we're gonna go make this this internal we're gonna automate this and automate this and automate this and automate this and i'm like oh my gosh that's so many things that's so many pieces that if something was to break you may not know what's actually broken because there's too much automation Okay, I'm not an automation fanatic, but I am definitely a practicality fanatic. I do not want to marry certain aspects of the business. Does that make sense? I'm not I'm not a, a good support person as an individual, but I'm great at setting up the processes. I'm great at training another person. I'm great at putting those kind of people to replicate me. Okay, to, to replicate the process I keep doing over and over and over again. So, anyways, that's all I'm trying to say is take a step back. And for me personally, it's it's really one of two things: is there a ton of repetition, and I can automate it. Um, and number two is, uh, is there just a huge pay point that I hate doing anyway? Okay. And so what I do is I take a step back and I start looking at those things and I start saying, okay, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's figure out how to free up me. How do I duplicate me? How do I free up my time? Okay. And so I step back and I said, that, that's literally what I do. And that's the question that I ask. And so the question, the answer to that question this time was your interview funnels, Stephen, interview funnels, interview funnels, um, or interview applications or what do you want to call them? They're not necessarily funnels. They kind of are. Um, they're mostly just internal processes, <laughs> but, uh, I guess the way I'm using them, they're still kind of funnels though. It's leading, leading to a specific place. So that makes sense. So what I did is on, uh, because in the past, someone would say, Hey, can I interview you, Steven? And I'd be like, sure. And it's literally the same questions that they're typically asking. It's usually the same questions that I'm typically asking with both. I'm sure giving the same kind of answers and it's driving me nuts. Okay. So what I did is I automated the whole thing. And, and so the, the first step, like I was saying before, step number one is I look for wherever the repetition of the pain point is, okay? Um, or, or if there needs to be more automated communication in general. Number two, I don't care how many funnels you've ever built. Please know that Russell and I both draw the funnel before we build it. Every time. I don't care how many times I built it. When I have, when I have not followed that rule, I'm usually more lost, number one. Number two, it takes me way longer to build it. I don't know why. I don't get it. Something about me putting it out on paper and drawing it helps me work out in my head all the kinks. Helps me. It, it literally helps create the map of each page, what each page is going to look like as I draw it. And literally, they're boxes. I'm drawing boxes with very high-level detail with little squiggly lines back and forth, piece to piece, over, you know, side to side. Does that make sense? I literally, I'm just drawing a high-end high, high end, um I'm sorry, like high level, 30,000 foot view funnel. Anytime I skip that, it's just, ugh, I don't know what it is. It really slows it down. So anyways, step number one, find the repetition slash pain point. Uh, step number two, draw the funnel. You've got to draw the funnel. Uh, so I've got, I, <laughs> I had to go buy another whiteboard. Um, it's kind of nice because it's a freestanding one in the middle of the room with two sides on it, which is kind of nice. So, uh, but I, it's 
chock full of four different funnels that I built. I built three funnels today, and the fourth was kind of interworking with the other three. Um, so these these three funnels that I built today. And uh, so I drew it out and then, then I go build it. And I usually will work off of the design of, of, um, of kind of the main funnel that I've been building off of. Okay, so step number one, like I said, repetition. Step number two, draw. Step number three is building it. And then number four is I just test it like crazy. And then number five is really key. I release it slowly. I phase it in, okay? Um, that's not always true, but most of the time it is. Uh, going in and automating something that I know you've tested it or, you know, how should I say? It's actually more important to phase it in if you're working with other people. If it's, if you're, if you're still a solopreneur, um, it doesn't, um, doesn't matter as much. So at the end of this, at the end of today, when I stopped building all three of these funnels, what I did is I turned back around and I said, Hey, um, I, I created a seven minute video with just my phone talking to an assistant that I have. Uh, she's amazing, but she's going to be the one who's managing all this. She knew it was coming up and I, I walked her through the entire process so that she knows how it works. But then I showed her like the two things she has to worry about. That's it. Okay. So now she knows how to do it all. She knows how to, so when someone wants to interview me, they go through, they, they fill out the little form. So I know what it's about. I know when they want to do it. I know the topics they want me to deliver. If there's like a value bomb, they want me to drop. Does that make sense? I know what those things are. They give me the Skype ID, Facebook ID, stuff like that. And it's all automated. Shoots that data over to Google, uh, a Google sheet. Um, and then automatically notifies the assistant so that they can go in and check it out, vet the person, you know, <laughs> they go through and check out the person. And then there's an automatically a Calendly link that's totally set up so that she just drops it over once the person's vetted. That's the only manual part. Uh, and then the rest of it takes care of itself and we get hooked up uh, whenever the interview happens. Does that make sense? I went through and I pre-selected the times that I want to be available for interviews or interviewing. And that's pretty much it. And then what I did is I did it for, I have two podcasts. This is one of them, obviously. I have a, a second one. And then I, uh, uh, the third category I did is off of stevejlarson.com. So they're very similar, but there are very subtle tweaks between all three of them that I built. So the first one is for stevejlarson.com. And that's if someone wants to interview me. Okay, and I get that request like crazy. I, I know there's some podcasting agencies out there and they keep trying to put tons of people on my podcast. I'm very protective of you as an audience. <laughs> I don't want just anyone coming in. So I, I, <laughs> I'm fine if people want to interview me. Okay. If they want to interview me over different places, like, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. You know, I, I just want to process. I want something in place so that I can send people to. So stevejlarson.com, what I did is I added, you can check it out if you want, or if you are actually going to interview me, that's fine too. But stevejlarson.com up at the top, it says interview me, right? And you click interview me at the top. And basically what I did, this is super clever. <laughs> I created um, a whole bunch of show hide elements, um, show hide rows. So it looks like you're going from one page to the other and you're not. It's actually one page where things are getting swapped in and out. And at the very last button, the whole form, all the forms submit at once. It's pretty cool. Then that data gets sent over to Google sheet, notifies the person, sends over a confirmation email saying, Hey, we got you. And then on the thank you page, I took the concept of an offer wall and I, uh, put it there on the thank you page. It says, Hey, look, uh, look, you want to come check out the talent directory? Uh, do you want to, do you want to get interviewed on one of my, do you want to put your talents on one of my podcasts? Do you want to, you know, it, it puts, it puts us all over the, anyway, it's pretty cool. It pushes all over the place. It's really awesome stuff. Three different places so that the loop doesn't close in the head. That's all I'm trying to say. The loop doesn't close on the last page. It is not a dead end. I push them to other places. I don't want, if a person is in momentum, I want to keep them in momentum. So I give them three other places they can go that are literally the beginnings of three other funnels. That's it. Does that make sense? Oh, I, this is like a lot of technical, more, more techno babble style stuff. I'm sorry if this is boring. I'm sorry if this is not a, a, as interesting. I usually try and tell more stories on this podcast, but I just wanted you to know like what I pulled off. Um, because it's really, really awesome. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is for Sales Funnel Radio. Okay, so the first one is if someone wants to interview me, but if they, someone goes to salesfunnelradio.com, and I need to redo that entire thing. But if they go to salesfunnelradio.com, up at the top it says get interviewed. And those are the people who are trying to get on the podcast to get interviewed. I am very protective. I, have, I, I vet those people very, very heavily. So there's an application process. Um, it's literally kind of an application funnel, kind of ish, um, kind of a blend of them. Um, but 
on that first page there, they go fill out the same, they go fill out uh, kind of somewhat of an application process, kind of. Uh, and then on the, on the second page, uh, it says, hey, look, here's the plan. The VA's, or my, my assistant, not, not really VA, kind of VA, <laughs> kind of, uh, goes through and vets it out. And we, we talk about it. We look through the content, look at the kinds of things you want to pull on there and, and talk about and stuff. And, uh, cause I do believe heavily in interviews. Um, and then, uh, we send out a specific calendly link for that with specific times that I'd love to be able to do those kinds of interviews. And that's it. And I did the same thing for my second podcast show. Does that make sense? I did this because I know that you guys, there's so many rock stars out there and I, I am not trying to just be the guy who puts his own voice only on here. You know what I mean? I, how should I say that? Um, how should I say this? Okay. I, I, I put this episode out a while ago and I it said publishing get haters and, and, uh, which is good. Uh, if you don't, something's wrong. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> I always laugh at the people who take the time to complain to me that I'm publishing. Like, <laughs> if that's your thing, stop listening. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay, I'm going to move on. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, but I want to be able to get other people on the on the show. I want to be able to get other people on to... Uh, I love that. And I know that you guys love that. And and it's it's list hacking for me. It's value adding for me and you. It, it helps show other awesome people in, in the industry and what they do and their talents. I want to interview people. I love interviewing people. Um, there's so many who are asking to, though, uh, that I needed to process. So I did that both for both podcast shows that I have. And then I also... Um, um, <laughs> this is about to be a third pod, third podcast show. <laughs> anyway, oh man, I don't. Know. I'm a gluttony for punishment, I guess. It takes like an hour per episode, just so you guys know, to be able to put these out. Anyway, uh, and then I also wanted to give people away if they want to interview me, uh, which I also love, uh, and I'm far more lenient on just getting on anyone's. Um, SteveJLarson.com. There's a lot that's going to change with SteveJLarson.com coming up soon. Anyway, also. So anyway, I'm kind of talking in circles now, but that's pretty much it. Management style funnels. You can use them for tons of things. Um, um, I love it when, um, okay, here's another example of one. When somebody bought uh, Secrets Masterclass, okay, um, when we were selling it a little bit more a la carte. It's not so much that way anymore. Um, when somebody bought it, as part of the offer, we were shipping out to them a physical thing, right? A book, a physical book. Now think about this for every one of your offers, okay? When somebody buys one of your offers, is there something physical that's getting shipped out? Well, what I did is I thought, how cool would it be if number one, let's send that data again over to Google Sheets. Um, but number two, there was a lot that happened with the Zap. In fact, I gotta remember, <laughs> guys, learn Zapier, okay? <laughs> Go, it's not hard. Uh, there's tons of tutorials. If not, you can probably just figure it out on your own anyway. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a whole bunch of if, then, the, uh, if this, then that statements. That's it. Um, but what I did, though, is, is I basically automated a Trello card being created with the person's with the customer's address, um, all the data that a fulfillment person needed, and it, it created a Trello card automatically for a specific individual uh, and pinged them and gave them a notification so that they knew to go ship out the specific thing. It was very specific. There wasn't, it wasn't like, a, anyway, it was super, super cool. Um, Calendly, you can you know automate all the the the, the tech, and you can you can automate stuff to Slack, automate stuff. There's so much stuff, and I feel like a lot of people miss the boat on it. Yes, ClickFunnels is amazing, but we know it is not necessarily for a CRM. It's not necessarily for management style stuff. You can do it. You can build it like that. I do it a lot. Okay, but it usually not usually it pretty much always does require a small zapier integration which is not hard to pull off and is if you do have to pay for it it's extremely cheap um if anything you can just use the free plan for a while anyway so anyway this is not a zapier uh um uh i don't know promo <laughs> but i just wanted to tell you guys more about that so I would go figure out more about what it is that's that you hate doing. Guys, the thing is that I want all my time, all my attention, all my focus, all of my brain power and mental shelf space focused on selling. That's it. Okay? So if there is something in my business that I am doing over and over and over again, I'm doing myself and my customers a disservice. 
okay? It's the reason I set these things up. I don't do it immediately because I'm not sure what the pain points are yet, but they come quickly and I am able to see pretty quickly. They'll start to pop out of the woodwork and I'll go, oh my gosh, I got to automate the X, Y, and Z, one, two, and three. Let's go through and let's create that. And I, I follow the same steps. Number one, where's the repetition slash pain point? Number two, draw it in depth. Explain it to somebody else. It will make the build, which is step number three, so much faster. Okay, then step number four, test it like crazy. Okay, go through and fill the form out. Put it in test mode or whatever it is. Like, do whatever. Okay, just fill it out. Try it and, and then run through a test, few test runs with your own VA or, or assistant or someone on your team or whatever it is um, and, and start to phase it in. Phase it into your, your, your processes. And then pretty soon you can step back and let go and maybe check it again in a month because everything should fire pretty correctly. Um, I never had too many issues at all with Zapier, to be honest. They're very... They're awesome. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it though. Uh, it is with the intent that I can continue to sell and focus on selling and create offers that I made these three funnels today. So anyways, that's pretty much it guys. Go back, figure out what it is uh, that you've got to, uh, that you need to automate, whatever your pain points are. If your time and your attention has not been on selling, ask yourself what it has been on and then ask yourself how you can get back to that. It's the only thing that matters, especially from the zero to seven figure range. It's the only thing that matters, okay? Don't worry about your desks, don't worry about renting an office, don't worry about your freaking logos, okay? (laughs) Only thing that matters is selling, that's all, that's it. You don't even have to have the product done, okay? Anyway, getting ahead of myself and getting on to another topic, so I better end this one, okay? (laughs) All right, guys, I'll talk to you later, Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today.